Hello and welcome back to the channel today. My name is Robert McClellan. I am a ProMix Academy mentor and I am here today to discuss the BandLab Mix Editor and to specifically do a comparison between the Mix Editor on say an iPhone versus that of the browser. So we're definitely gonna get a little nerdy with audio today and you know what, that's okay. Okay, let's begin by hopping over to the desktop and taking a look here at the actual mix editor that's within the browser-based DAW. As you can see here, this is what the typical screen would come up like within BandLab whenever you log in. And this is just your activities page. So I can also go to my tracks and see my most recent tracks that I've created. These might be complete albums that I've actually put together, playlists that I've built either of my own or curated playlists that I found here on the platform. And then lastly, the bands tab, which allows me to collaborate with other individuals online and to create sort of long distance bands. So upon first opening up the mix editor within the browser based DAW, you're going to see a couple of different options here. If you're starting from scratch, this is the screen that you're going to see. It's going to allow you to insert instruments using your keyboard or you can connect via MIDI. It also has a built in drum machine, a sampler, you can use your voice or a microphone, a guitar, and or a bass even to play directly into this browser-based DAW. Likewise, you can see down here at the bottom the ability to import audio and MIDI as well as use the BandLab Sounds feature. I'm going to go ahead and select the voice mic feature here, and we're going to go straight in here to just kind of show you what it would look like starting out. Down here at the bottom, you have your inputs and your outputs. As you can see here, I can set my microphone. Here is my input monitoring, which will allow me to actually monitor in real time what my microphone sounds like within the browser-based DAW. And then my output is going to be channel 1, 2, or 1 and 2. So this would be mono output 1, mono output 2, or stereo output. Okay, so that's all found here on the source tab, as you can see down here at the bottom. Now, if I was to move over here to the effects tab, you're going to see that all of that is going to change. And now I have different effects that I can add to whatever it might be that I've recorded. There are a ton of different effects here within the mix editor of BandLab, and all of them actually sound pretty good. Likewise, you can save your effects here, and after you've created them, sort of pull up templates again, and you'll be able to use those over and over again. So let's go ahead and record a small snippet of audio into this browser-based DAW, so you can kind of see exactly how we're gonna be using it. Far over misty mountains cold. All right, so as you can see here, I've just recorded my first piece of audio within the browser-based DAW. Now, from here, I've got a couple of different options. I can adjust the pitch of it here. I can adjust the playback rate or even reverse it. Okay, that's scary. <laughs> You'll also notice that at the bottom left and right hand corners, I have some extra options here as well. These areas here allow me to click and drag that audio to either cut it off or to extend it to whatever I would like for it to be. There is an audio snap feature as well. So you'll see that it actually does snap to the grid. Likewise, there's a small arrow right here that will allow me to drag out and loop that portion of audio based off of where I've cut it. If at any time I want to undo what I've just done, I can simply come up here to the undo feature and undo that. Now let's go back to the effects tab and add an effect to this. So here are the recommended effects that pop up, but maybe I want to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to add some modulation. I'm going to add a dual octaver. As you can see, the dual octaver pops up here at the bottom and it has a familiar look of either a plug-in or a stomp box. I'm going to leave this here as it's set and just hit play. Over misty mountains cold. All right, very cool. So maybe I didn't like that and I wanted to go back in here and I want to give it a little bit of space. So as you can see, when I loaded up a preset, it loaded up all kinds of effects and those are all found within these presets. As stated before, you can add any number of these plugins and or stomp pedals and you can then save them as presets. This is the warm plate preset. Let's take a listen. Over misty mountains cold. That doesn't sound too bad actually. But let's say that I wanted to make that really long and drawn out.
Over misty mountains cold. Okay, so now I've got something that sounds to my ears at least halfway decent from what I was wanting this to sound like. So now I'm going to go over here to save as. I'm going to call this warm plate drawn out and create that. Now that will be a preset that will be recallable at any time that I'd like to use that. Okay, so now let's say that I wanted to uh, do a little something different with this particular track. Maybe I wanted to color code it. Do that here. I can also freeze the track, which will then free up a lot of CPU usage and allow me to experience lower latencies. As you can see within these three buttons as well, there's also the ability to rename the track, set presets from within here, enable multi-track recording to record two different tracks at once, I can move this up or down on the track panel. I can import from a disk, export tracks as waves, duplicate the track or delete the track. Likewise, at any given time, I can come over here and rename whatever it might be. And I have panning options as well as my volume options here. Anytime I double click, it automatically resets back to Unity. And I also have the mute and solo option. Something that's sort of newer here as well is the ability to automate within the track panel. And this is only available on the browser-based DAW. Over misty mountains cold. Over misty mountains cold. As you can see, it works much like the automation feature that's found within Cakewalk by BandLab. And you have the ability to automate volume or painting. If at any time I don't want the automation on there, I can simply right click and select reset automation. Likewise, I have the ability to record the automation from here. Over misty mountains cold. Over misty mountains cold. All right, so as you can see here, there's several different options available to us at the top of the screen, which is sort of similar to the control bar of Cakewalk by BandLab. You have your file, which allows you to save whatever you're working on. You can then publish it for the world to hear, or you can also download it. You can download it as multi-tracks, or you can download it as a full mix down. Next, in your edit menu option, you have the ability to slice it at the playhead, undo and redo. For your tools, you have the ability to cycle, which is essentially just looping to whatever point that you set it at. Over misty mountains cold. Over misty mountains cold. When this is selected and is green, the cycle is enabled. When I deselect it, it's white again and it no longer is being looped. Also, there is a built-in tuner, which is great if you're a guitarist or a bass player. Lastly, on the tools menu, there is a latency test. Under the view option, you have the ability to set the grid size. You can either set this to a smart snap, or you can also snap it to bars. Likewise, you have the ability to snap it to half, quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th and 32nd notes. Next, you have the lyrics or the notes section, which will allow you to add lyrics while the music is playing this would be great if you're working on hip hop or you're laying down some bars to a beat that you've just created. Next on the view, you have your samples option, which will allow you to see all of the various BandLab sounds that are at your fingertips. And you can even listen to them straight from their browser menu. Aside from just the BandLab sounds, you have packs, loops, and even one-shots. When you find something that you'd like to use in your project, you simply click and drag it into your project and move it wherever you would like. Over misty mountains cold. Over misty mountains cold. And lastly, the small arrow that's found over here will take you to the BandLab Sounds website itself, 
where you can browse through all the various BandLab sounds with ease. If at any time you'd like to collapse this menu, you simply select the button again, and it goes away. MIDI mappings can either be implemented here, or you can also do it down here at the bottom. This allows you to set custom MIDI mappings for a control surface or for your keyboard. And the next viewable tab is the Collaborators tab. This will allow you to invite friends and fellow musicians to create tracks together. The next option found underneath the View menu is the theme. You can either set it to Dark, as I have it now, Cookie, Classic, or Light. Likewise, you can also set the BandLab Mix Editor to Full Screen, which gives it more of a DAW feel. If at any time you would like to exit full screen, you can either go to the view menu, or if you hover around up here, you can actually hit the X, and that will take you out as well. Next is the settings options. The first option in the settings menu is the snap to grid option, which will allow you to snap to the grid that you've predetermined based off of the settings that we had over here on the grid size. The next option is link zoom. If you have your editor open down here with link zoom enabled, when you zoom in on the track pane, it will also zoom in here on the editor. And as you can see, if it's disabled, there will be no change from the track pane to the editor pane. From here, you can also enable the metronome. Likewise, you can select it here to enable or disable. You can set a count in of one to two bars, and you can also access your metronome settings. You can also enable multi-track recording globally arm automation recording, select MIDI overdub, and quantize MIDI recordings, all from the settings menu. And the last option found up here on your control bar is the help menu, which will show you shortcuts, tutorials, or even a help center. And last but not least, the help bot. The next thing we find up here at the top is the ability to save the current project that you're working on. You'll notice that it automatically saves it as a revision. Anytime that I alter this, it will save it as a new revision. So at any time I can go back and redo what I've just done. The next option that's found up here is the publish option, which will allow me to publish this for all the world to hear. You have your typical control bar settings, undo, redo, Here's the looping feature again. This will allow you the ability to slice a track where the playhead is at. This is your go to beginning, play, go to end, and record. You can also set your clock to beats and measures or to minutes and seconds. You can adjust your key, your BPMs, and your time signature here. As stated before, you can enable or disable your metronome here, and you can also access your settings from here. Here's your global volume slider. And lastly, the ability to collaborate and start live sessions with people in real time. Okay, so now that I have something that I have saved, it will allow me now to go back and to see this. As you can see right now, it's still not officially been published. In fact, it clearly tells you right here that the revision is privately shared only with collaborators and that I need to publish it to get more reactions from the community. So as of right now, it's just something that's sort of in the making. If at any time I want to change anything, I can go back into the mix editor. Now all of my work is loaded and I restart right back where I left off. Now at the top of the control bar, I'm going to use the exit feature found here. And from within the screen, I can also look at the project details. This tells me how many versions or revisions that I've given it, and also allows me to copy a link to share it with other individuals before I actually set it to go live. And by clicking these three buttons here, I can even go into the mastering suite, download just the stems, upload a new revision, maybe something that I've worked on in Cakewalk by BandLab, and I can also change my revision settings. All right, now let's take a look and see what that would look like, what all of this would look like on a phone. And let's bring that up now. Okay, so whenever you open up your app, this is what it would look like. You're gonna see your following and your trending. This is showing you exactly within your feed who you're following and then who is trending. 
also even has some uh, industry news that pops up there. Here's some feature playlists, some featured tracks, as well as some hashtags that you can find specific genres of music if you'd like to as well. On the notifications tab, you have the ability to check notifications that have been given to you, as well as invites from other individuals that are on the BandLab platform. Now entering into the library section of this, immediately you see something that looks very familiar from what it did on the desktop version. So from this screen, you can actually access your projects, your albums, your playlists, your bands, or even the communities that are within BandLab. Now moving from the bottom left-hand corner to the right, you can see that we have our home button, which will immediately take us back to the home page. All right, let's say I wanted to open up a project. Let's see exactly how that would look here on an iOS device. I'm going to open the project Sunday Chill. It was created back in January 26th of 2020. And after just but a few moments, the project will load right where I left it off. Now, as you can see, the mix editor within the iOS device is much like the same mix editor that we worked with on the desktop version. The only difference being that now you can take it with you anywhere. Now there are some functionality features that are missing from the mobile device versus that of the desktop, namely automation and the ability to really get down on a more macular level to be able to mess with things. Later, if you want to move this project into Cakewalk by BandLab, you then have a full-fledged professional DAW at your fingertips that you can manipulate the audio in any way that you could possibly imagine without any limitations. Up at the top, if you tap on what looks like to be the waveform, it's going to take you to the screen that we're looking at right now. And by clicking on the mixer icon in the lower left hand corner, it will take you to sort of like a console view, which will allow you to mute, solo, turn up the gain, or pan tracks. You can also move them up or down within a project, rename them, or delete them from this menu option. Just to the right of that, there's a small icon that looks like a series of six knobs. By pressing this, it will allow you to go into the looping feature of whatever sample that you might be using. And just to the right of that is the ability to shape the sounds of whatever it is that you might be looping. You can also adjust the time signature as well as do a complete stop while you're recording onto the mix editor. And then much like the desktop version that we looked at, we also have our effects plugins here on the effects section. The next section that we're going to cover is the lyrics or the notes section. This will allow you to, in real time, read lyrics and or add notes while you're recording. And the next section after that is the settings menu, which will allow you to find the metronome, the tuner, and also adjust various other options. And lastly, you have the ability to save or publish your project right from your iOS or Android device. All right, well, I hope you found this video informative and useful. If you'd like to start using the BandLab browser-based DAW, this will definitely help you to get a best foot forward. Likewise, if you'd like to use your Android, your iOS device to capture ideas, to take them on the go, and then to import them into something as powerful as Cakewalk by BandLab, you now have the ability to do that, as well as sample things while you're out in public. It's also notable to mention that I am getting ready to have a massive giveaway here on the channel as we are getting ready to cross 10,000 subscribers. The link for that giveaway will be in the description of this video. And if you have not checked out the other video that we've made, which is a BandLab mastering algorithm versus a mastering engineer, yours truly, definitely go and check that out as well. I think you're going to find that very entertaining and ear opening. Eye opening? Ear opening? It's going to open something. Until next time, guys, remember that we can dream alone, we can create alone, but together we can achieve so much more.